Welcome back again, brothers and sisters. I've just put up uh, one video and I about one dream and I've wanted to make this as a separate uh, recording uh, so as not to overwhelm you all at once. Now, this second dream, I actually wasn't going to share this because I felt it was just sort of personal to me in some ways and it does contain some quite personal information. It also involves some people who are still living and uh, so I want to respect their privacy and try not to give too much away about them. Um, but then a uh, sister, Rhonda Empson, she had almost an identical dream to me. So I really felt that, yeah, I, I should, I should share this because it is an encouragement, not just to me, but also I, I, I hope to all of you. So I'll tell you about the dream and then again, I'll give you the interpretation. So in this dream, I, I had actually been asking the Lord because he hasn't really given me any dreams or visions for, for some weeks now. And uh, so every day I've been saying, Lord, please, please share something with me, something to encourage others or something to encourage me. And I went to bed this particular night and I really did cry out to the Lord and say, please, Lord, give me give me something. And so that night he gave me this dream and it was just the most beautiful, just the most amazing dream. Um, it was so lovely. And in fact, I was just walking around in a sort of a bubble for the next couple of days uh, because the impact on me was so profound. But in this dream, um, I was, uh, at one time in my life when I was very young, I was engaged to somebody and uh, uh, he lived in a foreign European country, not in the United Kingdom. He was not British. And in this dream, I, I was at his home now, and he's actually married to somebody else. Uh, we, we are in touch. Um, so he's married to somebody else now. It's many, many years ago, it's decades ago. And obviously, as you know, I'm married uh, myself and have been uh, for 25 years next week. Um, and so I was at his house and, uh, I, I was talking to him and I was talking as though we were going to get married and uh, we were sort of, it was awkward, the, the, the plans just, they, it was like putting together a, a, like a square peg into a round hole, it, it was awkward, it didn't fit and I was even talking to his wife, as I say, he's married to somebody else and as I was talking it began to sort of dawn on me that, that this this was all wrong, What what am I doing here, why am I why am I here? Why am I with him? Why am I talking about getting married? This is all wrong. We're not meant to be married. He's married to somebody else. What's, what's going on in my head? And as I was doing this, I, I, I was aware, I became aware of this, this sort of gentle knocking at the door. And as I, as I say, as I, as I became aware of it, I went to the door and I opened it. And there at the door, was my first love. Um, this was my first boyfriend when I was very young and uh, it, it was all very fairy tale for me and he really was my first love and um, yeah it, it was all very dreamy <laughs> as these things often are. And he was standing there and I thought what's he doing here and then it began to dawn on me that actually somehow he he found out where I was which couldn't have been easy because I had not broadcast at all to the world that I was going to this foreign country to see this person that I had once been engaged to to discuss getting married after all and I thought, I wonder, I thought he must have gone to a great deal of trouble to find out where I was and I have no idea how he did that and also he's come all this way. He's traveled all this way from, from England to where I am now. And he's gone to a lot of trouble for me. And it began to, I began to realize, you know, what am I doing here? I am completely in the wrong place. I, this is, this, this is not the life I'm meant to be living with this man, uh, who, as I say, is, is married to somebody else anyway. And it's not right. This was the wrong life. I was planning the wrong life. 
And here was this other man who was my first love and he'd gone to so much trouble and effort uh, to find me, to seek me out, to come after me. And it, his manner was so gentle. It was so gentle, it was so tender, it was so respectful, he was not pushy in any way. It was so loving and tender and uh, he really won me over. And I began to realize that actually, this is the person I should have married all along. Now, I'm not saying I should have married this, the, the real man. Uh, as I say, I've been married to my husband for 25 years. Uh, we married because the Lord told us to marry and we celebrate our silver wedding next year, next week. Uh, so I'm not talking about that, but in the symbolism of it, uh, I, sh I should have married him all along and I was living the wrong life. And even really before I'd realized it, he so lovingly and tenderly and self-sacrificially sought me out and came to find me, uh, to take me home as it were. And he, I felt wooed. It was all very, very loving and romantic. And the next thing that I saw in the dream was uh, I was in this village, still in this country where I was, and there were there was another person I recognised from my past, another a former friend, and uh, he was sitting outside a sort of um, uh, a tavern. Um, and he was just sitting there and uh, his name was Jack and I recognised him. He was also a foreigner from a different country. And then, to my great surprise, my, my father's sister, um, my aunt, Auntie Jean, walked right across in front of me and went into a shop. I thought, what on earth is Auntie Jean doing here? Especially because uh, she passed away some quite some years ago. Anyway, and then I was became aware that my first love was still standing beside me and uh, that I, I was going to go with him and um, I was in love with him and it was right and we were meant to be together and we got into this beautiful carriage. <laughs> it was all very fairy tale. You see why I didn't want to share this, it's really personal. And we, as it were, rode off into the sunset together. We rode off together to get married. So the interpretation of the dream. Um, I think this was a picture of my life and uh, applicable, I believe, to every believer uh, out there or every yet to be believer. The life I was living was the wrong life. It was the wrong fit. I was trying to make something work that was never supposed to work in the first place. I was not supposed to be marrying this man. It was completely inappropriate. And um, and I began to realise this. And there in the background all along was my first love. Now, Jesus, Yeshua, is referred to in the Bible as our first love. If you go to uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, you will see um, from verse 1 onwards, it says here, that uh, I have this against you, this is in verse 4, that you have left your first love. This was a warning to the church of Ephesus that they were doing lots of good works, but they'd fallen away from their first love. And uh, again, as I mentioned in my last video, even looking for the rapture can become a kind of idolatry. I'm not saying we shouldn't look and anticipate and be prepared. It absolutely should. And there is a crown for those who love his appearing. But let's make sure that we love him appearing rather than the appearing in and of itself. So Yeshua is described as our first love. And I can remember how I felt in those days. And goodness gracious, I was a teenager and it was all very, you know, it was all very dreamy. And it's meant to be a little bit like that. We're just meant to be so completely in love with him and besotted with him and enamoured of him. And as I say, in the in the dream, 
he was so gentle and respectful and patient and kind and unpushy with me it was it was literally for the next two days i just walked around in this kind of bubble of um of peace and and this i could feel this tremendous love this this beautiful tender love so uh we are called to stop living the wrong life and to return to our first love who should be Yeshua, our saviour, that we should love him above all things and before all things. And in there was this promise that he would come and take us, which again speaks of the rapture, or if we go before, of the resurrection, that he will come and take us home with him in like a fairy tale wedding. I mean, all of these things that we we celebrate in this world, all these romantic stories and the love and everything, they're all shadows um, and poor copies of what we are going to experience uh, when we are with him and with God in, in heaven. Um, because it says, I has not seen, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. We need to return to our first love because he has wooed us, he has sought us out, he has searched for us and he has gently called us and is waiting for us to get into this lovely carriage and, and, and go off and, and uh, enjoy with him the, the marriage of the Lamb that it speaks about in the book of Revelation 19, I think. Um, and so just one more thing before I finish. Uh, whenever, as I say, uh, whenever I get numbers in dreams or visions or words, or, or names, I, I looked them up because they are always of significance. So I thought, okay, what, what on earth is my Auntie Jean doing here? So I looked up, here we go, back to the old low tech days again here. I looked up the name Jean. Je well, actually, our first thing I thought was actually her real name in real life was Jane. So I thought I better look that up because that was her real name. And it says here on Wikipedia, well, and also Namebury, the name Jane is a girl's name in English and the origin meaning from the Hebrew is God is gracious. Um, or Yahweh, Yahuwah, um, Yahweh is merciful. So you can see I have a screenshot for you here. There we are. God is gracious or God is merciful. Uh, well, I better look up Jean and see, because that's the name she used to like to go by. And I looked it up, and again it says the original meaning is God is gracious, or the Lord is gracious. So there we have it again. God is gracious. So that's twice God is gracious. And I thought, well, I better look up Jack, this other friend of mine from decades ago. Jack. What about his name? And I looked it up and guess what it means? It means God is, sorry about this, God is gracious. God is gracious. So three times in that dream, in that little village, before we left, the Lord is saying, I'm gracious, God is gracious, which again perhaps speaks to the delay in our expectation of the rapture, um, it does actually say uh, in in the parable of the bridesmaids, um, we know that the ten virgins that it says that the that the uh, bridegroom was delayed, and why is he delayed? Because he's gracious. And there was a pause, you know. I, I, I he'd come to get me. And then there was we were in this village, and there was this pause and. I wasn't quite sure what we were doing there but the Lord said three times God is gracious and he is giving an opportunity with the delay to those who uh, who do not yet know him or who are perhaps backslidden or lukewarm have not fully returned to their to their first love um, he was standing beside me when I was there in the village and I was looking around and puzzling about why these people were here and what it meant and in the end I did go off with him in, a, in our carriage to our wedding so the Lord will come and take us in the carriage he came and took Elijah 
to Elisha in the carriage. Uh, he lifted him up. That's one example of, of the rapture, um, one foreshadowing of the rapture. But in the parable of the ten virgins, they, they, because the, the, uh, the bridegroom was delayed, they fell asleep. We mustn't do that. We mustn't fall asleep. We must still be vigilant and careful and keep a short account with him every day. We need him to be our first love. We need to keep our, our lamps full of oil, filled with the Holy Spirit. Come to the Lord every day and say, what do you want me to do today? What, what, what do you have? Do you have works that you prepared for me beforehand that I should walk in them today? Make sure that we have no unforgiveness or root of bitterness in our hearts. No, no idolatry. Just ask the Lord. You don't have to start searching and rummaging around in the back of your brain. But just say, Lord, please show me if there's anything I need to repent of, anything I've done that I should not have done, or anything I have not done that I should have done. And keep that close fellowship with him. And love his appearing, but love him first and foremost. And we need to be busy during this time still. We need to be sharing the gospel with any opportunity that we have. And praying. If you can't share the gospel, pray. Pray for people that you have spoken to in the past. Pray for the bride that she should be ready. And if you don't know Yeshua, please, I would implore you. You need to. You need to know him because he is your only hope. This life is a vapour, the Bible says. <sighs> That's it. It's gone. And then comes eternity. For it is foreordained for man to live once and then comes judgment. And you may think you're a good person, but uh, we all do things. We don't even live up to our own standards. I'm sure all of us have at some point in our life told a lie or we've had mean thoughts or mean words that we've said to others. We've been selfish. Um, we've cursed. We've, I don't know, and done much, much worse things than that. I'm sure all of us. And we would all agree that those those things are wrong. They're not they're not the standards that we would like to live up to. And if we can't even live up to our own standards, we certainly won't live up to God's. And we cannot earn his acceptance by saying, well, you know, I was good on that day. I've been good ever since. It's like um, if somebody comes before the judge for a crime they committed last week. I said, well, I've been really good since. You know, that's that's not considered relevant. They still committed their crime last week, last year, whenever it was, and they still have to face the consequences for that. And because we cannot get right with God in our own strength, he sent Jesus, he sent Yeshua uh, to die for us, to take our punishment for us. And it's a free gift. It's a free gift for whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's like a marriage, it comes at a cost. You need to give up your old life. You can't be married and live as a single person. You've got to change your life completely. So you need to be prepared to hand your life over to him. That's your choice. You can keep your life and live as you're living, but you don't know if you're going to lose your life tomorrow, in five years time, whenever, but you will lose it. And then comes eternity and judgment. And you don't want to be there. And Jesus says, he who will keep his life will lose it, but he who loses his life shall keep it. It's a paradox, but it's true. Because if we give it to him, then he gives it back to us as it should be and gives us the promise of eternal life as well from there. And he gives us peace as the world cannot give because there's no peace in this world. When through peace and security, a sudden destruction comes upon them. But what peace do you really have? Like I say, how can you have peace if tomorrow you could die or this evening? Or you could lose loved ones, or you could fall sick, or you could lose all your money. It's all happened before, the things that you trusted in. You know, hyperinflation, wars, they happen. It happened twice in the last century, in, in just in, in, in Europe. Never mind all the wars that go on throughout. My father lived through two world wars. Nobody saw that coming. So you don't really have peace. You just cross your fingers and hope for the best. You don't have to. You can trust that your life, if you give it to him, will be hid with him. And that he will take you with him in the rapture and or, or, or resurrect you on, uh, on that day. And you will be forgiven 
and it will be as if you'd never sinned. So I do encourage you all, please, to get right with the Lord. Please, repent, ask for his forgiveness, hand your life over. If you're backslidden, do likewise, put him first, because he is coming, and I believe it will be very, very soon. Thank you for watching. God bless you.